good. So, um, little housekeeping. Um, maybe if Dirk's listening, I don't know who would do this, but we need to get uh, on the screen when we're doing Hartsutu. We should end with Parjna Paramita. So, um, of course, in the uh, paper copy, have a line drawing of Prajna Paramita. That's whose mantra we're doing, right? So, um, I don't know. I, I've talked about it before, but I know sometimes these things are hard to follow through on. You know, it's like my desire to have um, signs telling people how to get to meditation. So, hopefully, <laughs> someday. So, uh, Anna, are, you, are you saying you want a picture of Prajna Paramita after the Heart Sutra? We'll do things right away, you know, but then, then that ends up then I start feeling like I'm not good, but I know I'm a good teacher, so that can't be the right logic, you know? <clears throat> but uh, uh, there's a nice, uh, um, uh, there's some talks, uh, there's a book, an old book, that talks of uh, Geshe Rapton, who's a wonderful teacher who's in Switzerland for a long time, and with a nice, beautiful um, picture, maybe it was a, um, Western artists of Prajna Paramita. So uh, that would be great if, or there might be some on the internet now. We could either, it's in the cottage, go take a picture of it, and then maybe, I don't know, I don't know who's doing that. You know, Dirk can do it, or some of our folks here can do it. So we, when we're doing it, we have a picture. So, uh, because when we're uh, doing, um, doing the prayers, uh, which in a way we should just, that's the meditation. I shouldn't have to say anything, right? We should just do that. We have the view and everything, and we should just meditate. I should, there should be no talk. You just do the prayers and that's it, right? Heart Sutra and there, right? <clears throat> but uh, who, who could be responsible for, you know, getting Parjana Paramita up on there? Who would, Oh, good. I knew you would do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, very good. So, because um, of course, uh, I'm very interested in um, lineage. So, uh, when we're, we have to emphasize um, with heart, with um, hearts, it's very interesting. We have the Buddha, we have uh, Avalokiteshvara. Uh, uh, we have Shariputra, and um, uh, we have Prajna Paramita, right? So um, that's important, you know, because we start with um, Padmasambhava, uh, and then we do Shakyamuni, and then we do um, uh, Prajna Paramita. So it's nice to have a little gender balance there, you know? Um, but also, I'm thinking at um, some point, maybe uh, Dirk can help me on this. Um, uh, it would be interesting to uh, do uh, our praise to Yeshi Sogil, don't you think so? Um, that might be uh, a little bit uh, different for some people, you know, like I usually, um, you, you run through the, um, the male lineage, right, you know. Um, <clears throat> I'm a very traditional teacher in a lot of ways and um, recognized as a Tolkien Rinpoche by um, the monastery, but um, I do some different things, like uh, 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 we have the Tara Madonna, right? So uh, even when um, Geshe Gendon was here, uh, I don't think he'd seen the Tara Madonna, but uh, he, he kind of like, I wasn't there. Who was there when he, he was shown? Yeah, he kind of like, well, what's that, right? Okay, so um, this is the power of images, right? Because of course, some of them, you know, it's my visionary, my terma, but um, uh, of course we talk about Tara as the mother of the Buddhas, but you generally don't see um, Tara, you don't see a Tara Madonna, do you? 
there is we uh, Patty and I were looking around, and there was some. Who is it? There, there is one where this there's a a, a a goddess with a little baby. Yeah, did you write it down? I, I don't have. I did write it. Down. Yeah, we'll find it. Yeah. Does it look silly? It looks uncomfortable. But does it look silly? No, but. <laughs> do you do you need to fix it? Yeah. I just okay. Want to fix it. If you must, yes. Yeah. Does that feel better? Uh, no, but does it look better? <laughs> Not the same. Okay, no, it's, it feels fine. Thank you. I was being playful. <clears throat> too loud? Is it too loud? Mm. No, it's perfect. And, mm. So if, if I introduce, if I say, oh, you know, as part of the prayers, I say, let's do something to put Yeshi Tsokil in there. Uh, what do you guys think? How about video land? Yes? No? Yeah. So if I do that, then then you, you're all like in video land in here. You have to back me up, you know. Say, oh, it's a sort of traditional teacher comes out. Why are you doing that? Oh, this is what we do. You can't, you can't say, oh, I don't know why Lama does that. Why is Rinpoche doing that? I don't know. He must be crazy. No, you don't say that. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 we do that. That's what we do. Yeah, you didn't know we do that. Yeah, that's what we do. Because, hmm. of course, today I'm thinking about mothers. So it's there are four major holidays. We're celebrating one uh, today. I wanted to celebrate when I'm here and around the full moon, but I think um, some groups celebrate it November fourth, a few um, more days away. But I won't be here, so so Lava uh the Buddha's descent, great holiday of his descent from the heaven of the thirty-three. Um, he went to. Uh, visit his mother. And um, he was gone a while. And it said that um, Madhagalyana, Kamaha Madhagalyana, um, was appointed to um, ask him to come back. Madhagalyana was known for his psychic powers and his ability to travel to other realms. So. Um, maybe it took some convincing, but on the Buddha came back on this um, well-known tankas of him coming down the stairway, very specially constructed stairway. Maybe it has 33 steps. I'd have to look into the scholarship of that. So this is a major Buddhist holiday. You know, that's kind of interesting. Of course, you know, the Day of Miracles, turning the wheel, um, you know, uh, Buddha's birthday, those things are big. <clears throat> but, you know, it's interesting. This is, it's interesting to me. This is a big, this is a big holiday like that. <clears throat> so during big holidays, it's said that um, the effects or the power of our practice is multiplied. <clears throat> Sometimes it's just a power of ten, but then sometimes teachers go ten million. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So I think it, uh, the holiday can be understood on various different um, paradigms or levels. <clears throat> um, usually it's Probably when groups around the world are celebrating it, like our kind of groups, it's kind of like literal, like, okay, there's heaven, and there was Shakyamuni Buddha, and traveled, met the mother, gave some teachings, came back, because um, we believe in those kinds of things in a literal way, like Sangha went to visit Maitreya, got a whole bunch of teachings, and now we have the five treatises and so forth. 
So we can look at it from a very literal point of view. That's, he was gone for a couple of weeks and came back. Does anybody know what the story says? How, how long was he gone for? It's interesting. So um, maybe it was a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right, two months. Um, probably didn't tell a lot of people he was going. <clears throat> Frequently, uh, we know from the suttas that um, the Buddha would go on retreat individually, alone, uh, quite often. Sometimes, um, just for his own practice, but um, Definitely a few times the Sangha was arguing. <laughs> so we'd say, I'm out of here, like that. Um, I, uh, I tried to leave meetings or things when they're crazy, so I'll just step out, but um, usually people know. But probably you know, he might have just kind of not told everybody. And people were thinking, oh, no teachings today, okay? They would have asked Ananda or Shariputra or somebody, or Galeana, like, oh, um, is the Buddha coming up? No, oh, no, he's in his hut. They go, oh, okay. The next day, um, teachings? Um, no, 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 Buddhist. Like, so um, I just wonder, like, how, how long would people stick around? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a consumer. I mean, even in India, I thought it was kind of maybe a consumer driven culture. I don't know, consumers, you know, like, um, you know, like we walked all the way from southern India to Magadha, and and he won't come out of his hut. What gives? So, um, you know, how long would do you think the average person would hang out like that? Actually, we know from various traditions that even now that's very common um, that you'll get all excited about visiting a teacher and then you'll hear their own retreat. I've told stories about that, you know. And you go, WTF, but I'm here, <laughs> you know. So, um, you know, maybe now it's happening. People are kind of going, well, it's three weeks now and, you know. Um, is he okay? You know, but um, so that's that's one way to look at the story, like that, <clears throat> kind of literal. And then what Galliana says, um, you know, people are starting to drift off, <laughs> so, or, or they're really missing you, or they're going through their abandonment issues. You know, um, uh, even after I. Um, go to a, a, a new uh, living home in the Northwest, I'll be coming down uh, regularly uh, to teach, so I say I'll be a real Lama then. Um, but um, I wonder, like, you know, if I'm not down for a month, how many people will just kind of drift away, right? I'd say it was two months, you know, like, you know, Lama doesn't come anymore, he used to come all the time, and what happened? <clears throat> I wonder how many people would stay. So. Um, you know, somebody would kind of call Patty, like, would call, like, got to come back. <laughs> so um, the Buddha did come back, but I, I wonder what kind of um, conversation they had like that. <clears throat> so there's that kind of personal, maybe historical, maybe slightly um, storytelling version. But um, if we're practicing, um, from an Atta Yoga point of view, or Mahamudra point of view, we have to think um, uh, that when uh, the Buddha is talking about visiting the mother, uh, uh, you know, what what's going on there? So uh, all these holidays have courts in outer, uh, very outer, outer, inner, 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 <laughs> secret, very secret interpretation, but, um, Let's leave the outer a little bit. So if we're approaching it from um, highest yoga tantra or Dzogchen point of view, what 
what's the holiday about? <clears throat> um, sometimes, of course, when we're talking from um, Anatara Tantra point of view, we call it the Mother Clear Light, don't we? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, sometimes I looked in their texts that talk about both, um, uh, you know, both together, a Samatabhadra and Samatabhadri, sometimes the All-Knowing King, sometimes uh, the Great Bliss Queen, you know, different. Um, but uh, uh, the many texts of which the Heart Sutra is one that um, are about the mother. So the mother of everything has to be what? How, what does, when we're really talking about insight into the truth, you know, what, you know, what if we say, if, have you, are you visiting your mother? Have you returned to your mother? You know, what, what are we actually talking about? <clears throat> and then, um, uh, why, you know, why would we want to leave the mother, right? Who, who wants to do that? The Buddha didn't, right? So one way of looking at it is um, when we're um, visiting uh, the mother, whether we say um, uh, Prajna or Yeshe, whether we say, um, you know, you know, Rigpa or Yeshe, so why would, why would we want to leave um, primordial awareness and come back to duality, right? Who would, who would want to do that? So, <clears throat> I think the story is, um, on an inner level, is how we uh, make the transition um, from, uh, usually the journey is, okay, I want a journey to the mother, I want a journey to, um, open uh, primordial awareness, non-dual awareness. Uh, we don't think about like, well, what happens when we have to like, go back to work? <laughs> Has anybody ever tried to, um, I hope some people have tried, tried to get in their car after doing a long retreat? Okay, so, we should be better drivers. After like just doing a, like a Shamatha Vipassana retreat or a long retreat, we should be much more in our bodies and much more, you know, together, right? Um, but it's uh, lots of times more difficult to drive. Why, why is that? <clears throat> um, I had a friend, um, Dan Jorgensen, who went on a three-year retreat with Kyle Rimshe. This is back in the mm, 80s or 90s, and um, really difficult re-entry. Came back, had to get a divorce. <laughs> of course, he left thinking he'd still be married when he got back, but that's another story, so. Um, <laughs> Like, his wife, like, maybe if you'd gone a six-month retreat. So he went to visit the mother, but when he came back, <laughs> consort gone. But uh, he took some time off, and then um, we talked, and he ended up going back to grad school, being a therapist. <clears throat> uh, so, but it was hard. The re-entry is hard. But it shouldn't be, right? It, should, you know, it just goes against the logic, like you do a lot of practice and you should be super skilled. <clears throat> so I'm going to suggest on an inner level, we, we need, um, you know, uh, uh, this Mudgaliana to um, invite us back, you know. <clears throat> um, I never got really close to um, uh, Jogam Trungpa Rinpoche. 
um, just I was too young and too scary. It's not too scary. Um, but but I did date his attendant, so that kind of thing. <laughs> so uh, um, a lot of times uh, she said, you know, he just wanted to leave. And I said, well, um, I had an interesting old style name. I liked it a lot, Irma. You know, it's like. Uh, so I said, Irma, what, what did you do? And what, so um, he told her that when he wanted to leave, uh, you know, just leave, uh, she should whisper uh, the names of his students in his ear. Isn't that sweet? Hmm. I can just imagine. <laughs> so, uh, Maybe, you know, we, we, we need that part of our inner world to say, okay, come back, come back. Mm. Um, even, even for great Mahasiddhas, um, the world of duality of uh, the samsaric world and um, the this perceived self world is is painful, right? So um, we'd always think, oh, someone's enlightened, they're Buddha, Mahasiddha, that they're just going to come back and things are great. But um, uh, generally, uh, we we don't want to leave the mother. Why would we? Why would you want to re-enter? <coughs> so uh, that's why. Uh, you know, teachers just like us have Samaya vows. And so we say, uh, even even after I achieve Buddhahood enlightenment, I'll um, come back <clears throat> and help out and um, I'll participate in lines or administration. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we need that, you know, we need to our own inner reminder. It's like, yeah, and so I do it. Yeah, but um, actually, you know, it's uh, it's kind of a joyful return, but it needs structure. So in Tonka's, um, the Buddha coming out of heaven, that they these steps, right? So just like we need a lamrim going, we need a lamrim coming back. Like that, just as important. <clears throat> uh, when I was doing a lot of mountain climbing, I, I was told, and I found out that yeah, coming down can be where a lot of the accidents happen. Right, you slip, or it's just why is that harder? It seems harder. Maybe you're in a rush. Maybe you're tired, going down. So most of the problems I've seen in. Um, People's practice, maybe the most difficult problems, I'll put it that way, is like when someone's returning from retreats uh, or returning from a visit to the mother, like an experience, right? People like, I had some opening experience or realization, and then that the return becomes an obstacle. Like this, this attempt to preserve it or hold on to it, this, this like, um, great, I see that everything's empty, open, and luminous, but my kid's not going to school the next day. <laughs> like that. You can't just say to your, you know, 13-year-old, um, everything is open, empty, luminous, and fundamentally free. Um, do you get that? So now, um, does that help going to school? Probably you wouldn't. So we need a structure of, of return, and we need um, helpers to uh, remind us of our um, pledge, but also remind us there's, there's a path of return also. You're not just, you know, you're not just discharged from the hospital on the street, right? So uh, the holiday is, is very interesting about how um, we're spending time, uh, you know, in awareness in uh, Rigpa, but 
then um, the world calls us back. This, this happened, you know, many times where um, teachers were asked to, you know, come back from retreat or break retreat and stuff like that. And of course, you know, don't want to do it. <laughs> but um, we need a structure to return. So um, uh, that, that structure I'm building all also here at Lion's Or So um, those that are used to having me around all the time um, will also know that there's a structure of return. So with ourselves, there's a structure of return. So when you're with in a relationship and people are coming, are you going to that temple again? Or uh, I thought you just meditated yesterday. Do you have to do it again? You know, well, <laughs> we can say, yeah, um, you know, we're, we will return. Then we'll leave again and then we return. So the leaving and the returning, leaving and returning is itself the activity of uh, interdependence. Mm the functioning of uh, awareness. So maybe I'll, I'll stop there for now. Um, I'm interested in um, people's comments and um, conversations and complaints. There's anyone from Zoom who has questions or complaints or comments? Thank you, Lama. I really appreciated the talk. Lots I hadn't ever thought about the holiday before, but I have a simple but kind of burning question. Mm. I was curious if there are 32 other heavens. Uh, yes. Um, so there's, um, uh, I believe the 33 is the very top of the form realm, uh, where a lot of the um, devas are. But then there's, then there's formless realms. And then we have, of course, many um, Buddha fields or um, Pure Lands, it's kind of the gloss. So, of course, Chenrezig has Pure Land and Amitabha, Sukhavati, and Chenrezig, Patala, so forth. Um, when uh, the mind is so powerful, uh, we can go eventually where we want to go. But usually um, it isn't that powerful because we're not trained, so we just end up, um, you know, kind of like normal, like normal nighttime dreams. We're just kind of, it's going to happen, and we'll be kind of wishing for a good dream. Um, people that are practitioners know that um, all dreams are useful, and um, actually, what it's usually characterized is uh, bad dreams. Um, lots of times has much more usefulness than the good dreams. So um, people that are non-practitioners always want to get rid of their bad dreams instead of work with them, but that's another topic. But yeah, so there are many different heavenly realms, and um, uh, the, in, in India particularly, at that time, the Buddha, they really developed the ability to um, you know, travel to different realms, um, different heavens too. Then of course we have the six realms that are standard like that. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, on a practical level, like this is kind of our own certain kind of lion's or realm here, and then go out to lunch, it's a different realm, or <laughs> go home, it's a different realm. So if, when people are doing a mature practice, they're able to move around the realms and between the realms um, with some uh, mastery or ease, right? Because the big problem is uh, change. 
I don't think change wouldn't be a problem. A big problem is um, we're constantly having to journey to different places and different realms, and we don't, you know, we don't know where we are. You know, so um, if we know when that switch is happening and where we are when we're there, then um, there's a lot less confusion. So that, that's another way of talking about the holiday, because um, the Buddha was so advanced. He could say, well, I'm just, <laughs> just going to visit this realm where my mom is. I know, I know where she is, you know, like that. Um, so um, when our practice is still developing, of course, there's a sense of we're kind of stumbling on uh, Rigpa, um, uh, st stumbling on open awareness. Or we're treating like, wow, that's really weird. And I was, something happened. I just things open up for a second, you know. Um, but of course, we we want to be able to, you know, stabilize the view, so that we can, um, you know, we, that's available. That's what we're working on. But yeah, no, it, it's got to be somewhere. Like, who's at low? Who's at the first one? And who's at the second one? Like that. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I just happened to think um, while I was looking at the screen, there's returning like in person, but these days there's all these other ways of being in touch of being present via FaceTime and Zoom. And mm -hmm. I don't know, all of those. So how does that play in? That's a good question. So um, in uh, Vajrayana, I think I just, there we go. Um, uh, if someone's a tantric student, then they're doing uh, Lama Naljar, they're doing Guru Yoga, so um, there's a sense that uh, the teacher is uh, always present, or you, you're doing a yoga to invite the teacher to come. Um, so we could say on some level, inviting the teacher would be totally inviting the mother, the Dharmakaya, and um, just complete a formless awareness, but also in our tradition, we we understand that um, uh, the teacher can actually like show up. So, um, for you know, so for a number of incredible yogis like um, Lama Sankapa and, and um, Mepam Rinpoche, like Manjushri would just show up like that. Um, uh, so you could actually. In our tradition, we can actually have a conversation like that. It sounds really kind of interesting. It almost sounds like some evangelical Christian kind of thing, doesn't it, a little bit? Um, or shamanic, definitely. Um, so uh, visionary experiences, um, when they're valid, um, uh, count in our tradition. So, um, for example, uh, um, behind the, um, which I think is appropriate, um, behind the, I'd like to say at the audiovisual booth, the studio, is this beautiful gold tonka of Jigmelingpa. So Jigmelingpa um, was a Teton and um, very important person uh, uh, in the uh, old translation school and basically channeled uh, Wang Champa. So, um, that was, you know, so it had complete visions of um, uh, the a guru that, you know, taught maybe three, you know, three, four hundred years earlier. And because Jigme Lingpa's um, teachings, or what he channeled through Long Champa, were so profound and right on, um, they became established teachings to this day. This is like, so. Um, Sometimes those aren't always accepted right away. You know, it's interesting because the Jigme Lingpa was um, a little bit eccentric, and 
course, um, Lama Nipan was a little bit eccentric too, so um, not all um, uh, treasure finders or not all um, visionary experiences are immediately validated, right? Because uh, some people, it's reasonable to say, well, I don't know, you know, that person say they, you know, were get, like Tilopa, they, they might say, oh, I was, you know, I received these Mahamudra teachings from Vajradhara, right? So you'd go, well, where's Vajradhara? And they go, oh, Vajradhara is um, hanging out in the, you know, Simbukakaya. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but in, uh, if the teachings are good, you know, that's very Mahayana thing. If the teachings are true, it's the teachings of the Buddha. So, um, you know, but generally they have to be validated. So, uh, in our tradition, you, you, you know, we, we can do Zoom and um, now we're, um, we're doing, uh, people are doing, you know, impairments through, through Zoom. Um, this is not entirely a new thing where the innovative teachers of the 20th century, 21st years, um, Chagal Namkai Norbu, who um, early on, because he was in Italy, um, people know who Namkai Norbu was? Yeah, one or two people, yeah. So, um, would uh, give transmissions to select students, you know, um, remotely. Uh, we didn't have TV, but, you know, just, you know, phone, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, that was really early. I thought, can you do that? And, yeah, we're doing it. So like that. But uh, the point of Vajrayana practice is to understand the guru principle and that the inner lama is always there, of course, like that. But then, you know, when, um, uh, you know, our actual physical Nirmanakaya teacher dies, it's difficult. So, I haven't talked to him recently, but uh, Lama Lodra Rimshe and um, anybody know Lama Lodra in San Francisco? No, but yeah. So um, I started a center early on in San Francisco. Still there, I hope, um, with the panhandle. Um, so uh, when Kala Rimshe died, um, you know, I was asking. Uh, Lama Lodra Rimshe about it. He said, when he first heard, you know, he said, well, of course, um, uh, Kala Rimshe's mind uh, is one with the Dharmakaya, meaning all pervasive, right? Can't say, you know, Mahamud is here, or Rikpa is here, or is not here. <laughs> so it's all pervasive, right? So he said at first, like, it was kind of, of course, yeah, all things are impermanent, and the uh, mind is. Um, everywhere, um, you know, color room shades everywhere. But um, when uh, he went, you know, they they had, it was in uh, Sonata, I guess, you know, so um, Lama Lodra got to India really fast and they still had, um, uh, they hadn't cremated color room shades um, body yet, you know, they was in Tukden and he just broke down crying. Oh, I get it. I totally get it. So that's interesting, you know. So on one level, like, yeah, totally, you know, even teachers that they're, they've completely liberated themselves, of course, there's still incredible sadness when, um, you know, a personal teacher or people pass away, you know, it'd be weird not to. So we're, we're very um, operatic in our tradition. We don't have to be stoic about that. <laughs> it's not a relief like that. So um, when my teacher died, I, I, I couldn't even, I fell on the floor, I fell on the floor. I couldn't even, I could not walk. It was really, and I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say I'm great that way. It's just like, I, at first I had the same thing, like, okay, of course, you know, um, Geshe passed, was ready, saw him just a week before he died, got it, got it. But when you actually get the news, then it's kind of like, just it's the, the life force, you just want to go like that, and, you know, snot kind of coming out of my nose, and the person I was with was very scared, you know, like that. So, 
but we, we get to have that in our tradition. We can, we can go that direction. But then, of course, some people are, like even the Buddha, there was one Sangha member that said, oh, great, <laughs> now we don't have to follow the minor rules, you know. <laughs> you know I wish I knew who that was. Yeah, good question. Thank you, Lama, for talking about uh, this uh, holiday. Yeah. One of the things, um, you know, you're talking about the mother and the Buddha and his relationship to his mother. Um, a lot of times we talk about Prajnaparamita as being the mother of the Buddha. Yeah. Um, I've always kind of wondered, you know, in the traditional story of the Buddha, his mother's name was Maya, mm -hmm. which is, you know, is illusion, right? Yeah, yeah. I've always wondered what the significance of that is. Like we know the emptiness brings Buddhas into the world, or mm -hmm. the, the, the Prajnaparamita, but you know, that his physical mother in this world was named Maya. I always thought that was maybe significant, but I was never sure why or how. <clears throat> yeah, so, um, you know, it's, it's just interesting, you know, so, um, you know, may, maybe, <laughs> like, I'm thinking like a Western historian now, may, maybe, probably, her actual regular name was not Maya. That would be my guess. So then uh, later, um, uh, you know, maybe like, just like, uh, you know, we say Mahatma Gandhi or something like that, you know, his name wasn't Mahatma, right? But, um, uh, there is, um, if, it, if it wasn't for illusion, we couldn't wake up like that. So um, uh, there's many um, high level texts about how um, uh, we, we have to depend upon um, illusion and, and work with um, deception uh, and work with mistakes. So um, usually in the Lama room style, you say normative Buddhism, of course, you would say, well, you never want to make mistakes. Just here's, here's how to do it. Don't make any mistakes and you'll be fine, right? But <laughs> in the Mahasiddha traditions that I've been um, trained in, then, um, which Trung uh, Purimshe was one of them, I, you know, he called it the mistake lineage. So, um, but no one likes, and just to point out, no one likes that because <laughs> uh, it's generally embarrassing. But um, yeah, so we try to set up a situation where, um, which is absolutely necessary that I've mentioned before, even um, although Lama Sankapa is um, traditionally, traditionally presented as kind of Mahayana and very ordinary, actually it wasn't. Um, the tantric side was, uh, of course, um, very strong. So, whether we're whatever we're doing um, uh, to have realization, we have to see the uh, the open nature mind and the closed nature mind simultaneously. You know, you, you have to see how you're making the mistake. So, um, uh, like. One of my roommates at one time was Russian, and um, he uh, we were talking about Russian literature. <laughs> and so, what do you think of um, uh, Dr. Zhivago? And uh, he liked Dr. Zhivago because Pasternak was Jewish. And um, he said, unless you read the Russian, you don't know what a great novelist he was because Zhivago was a mediocre poet, see, that was part of the story, and Pasternak could write mediocre poetry. So that's real mastery, you see, <laughs> like you know how to do it wrong. So, um, yeah, if we always just, if, we, if you know how to do it wrong, and you know how to do it right, if you know correct and incorrect, and hold them together at the same time, then you're going to have um, um, an interesting experience. So I try to do that here with, you know, a few people are willing to do that, but you, you have to start with shamatha. Um, most of these shamatha people are trying to banish their thoughts so they're doing it wrong. You want to um, 
are just like Gaurav Dorje's three um, statements. You, you want to see thought and liberation simultaneously, right? Yeah. Hmm. Nice. Were these satisfactory responses, Susan? Satisfactory? <laughs> I guess you know what you're going to do. Although I like when Geshe Tenge is super that, and he's great and goes, well, if I didn't, you know, answer it correctly, um, you know, ask me again. That's really a real, real scholar and goes afterwards, and the, and the cottage goes, well, how was it? <laughs> So it was good, actually. Um, this is the first time you know, in the last couple of months he's given a talk to, um, you know, traditional Western audience. You know, he's just used to um, Tibetan audience. You know, so I said, "Yeah, it's pretty good." We don't know what the story was that you want to tell. So that must have been. It was juicy. I don't know. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Oh, so very good. This means everyone's no oh, one more question. Okay. Hmm. If Prajna Paramita is the the mother of the Buddhas, is Buddha's mother Prajna Paramita? <clears throat> so yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one way to think of our like Nirmanakaya body as, as illusory, so like Maya, so it appears that um, you know we're you know just a physical birth. Um, of course, the story with the Buddhist birth was you know kind of um, it's not the virgin birth like Christianity, but um, uh, born out of the side. So maybe that's dissing women, I don't know, but you know, the idea was that um, uh, there, was, there was no pain, you know. Um, uh, and of course, uh, Queen Maya had this vision of this um, big, huge white element, elephant, right? Interesting, so white elephants, I guess, are kind of rare. There's a lot of, myth there's a lot of archetypal mythology there, but yes. So, Tara is also said to be mother of the Buddha, so, but, and of course, um, um, when you say, uh, you know, we say prajna, generally um, we're translating that wisdom or um, uh, to, you know, kind of Herbert Gunther style, discriminating apperceptive awareness or something, but on jhana, uh, you know, is, is, or Yeshe is um, direct, um, uncontrived, non-conceptual knowledge where there's a sense in Prajna that it's still an aspect of discrimination, um, which doesn't, which we need. So we need both nya, <laughs> non-discriminating awareness and discriminating awareness, both. Because after retreat, you still want to drive and not have an accident. Mm -hmm. But maybe Maya had that, like, it appears that we're born and we die, right? Definitely appears, but um, it cannot um, be from kind of both from Dzogchen style and Madhumikan style. If we go looking for who it is that is born and who it is dies, we cannot find that. If we go looking for uh, birth as a separate thing, we and death as a separate thing, we can't find it. So it is illusory in a sense to say, I was born and I'm dying. Mm -hmm. Yay. Still, there's cemeteries and mortuaries, aren't there? <laughs> so, um, when I was studying uh, um, Korean Zen with uh, Sung San Son's name, um, uh, you know, he, uh, he 
had kind of a, a system, kind of a con system. And um, so it's about where, where do you go to, uh, you know, when you die? Um, so an answer that he liked, you know, it's like, uh, you know, just like, okay, just, where do you come from? Okay. But you'd also have to follow it up. I don't know, do you get that? That's it. Um, so, but you'd also have to follow up with, you know, I go to the cemetery. But, you know, one, and then I go to the cemetery. So, hmm. so this is very polite, you know, like polite. Um, but, um, of course, in um, other Zen traditions and um, our Mahasiddha tradition, what, what would be if you say, where do I go to? Yes, <laughs> Justin already knows, yeah? Like, uh, unfortunately, you can't hit people that much in the United States. I've been hit because I've had Asian teachers. Yeah, anybody want to be hit here? <laughs> <laughs> so I have to go for emotional hits, you know? Those are, those are harder to report, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah, they really, in Asia, they really do. Yeah, they do. You know, like, of course, t you know, Talopa slapping Naropa. You know, like, that, that's not, and, you know, other, you know that, that, that's not metaphoric. Okay, so we close. <clears throat> So, Dirk, can you help me find uh, Yeshe Sogyal praise? Uh, sure. Yeah, so, you just want a simple praise? Yeah, let's. We, we can look at various various ones. And okay. Uh, maybe maybe uh, you can have a, a partner do that. Maybe uh, Jan Sparks can also help with that. You two poets work together. How's that? If she wants to, I'm happy to have her help. I think she's saying, she's saying yes. yes. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do closing. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, actions may I quickly attain the state of Guru Buddha lead all living beings without exception into that mind state. Supreme Jaw Bodhicitta, that has not arisen, arise and grow. May that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land circled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezig, Chenzengatsu, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of extreme and profound and vast instruction to fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalok Teshvara, great treasure of obstacle of passion. Manjushi, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroy the entire host of Maras. Nankapa, crown jewel of the snowland sages. Losang Drakpa, I make requests at your holy feet. <clears throat> so the, we have um, some potluck, right? Yes, we have a potluck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have yes, some, announcements. some announcements. And uh, when announced, we, I will be leading the Kala Chakra Sadhana too today. So um, I'm going to give the mic to Susan. Hi. So Lama would like to have another um, gathering of the delics, the uh, caring and helping. Uh, cadre of, of people that 
And of course, anybody and everybody is invited. Um, this would be on November 11th, which is a Saturday from noon until two um, in the dojo um, as extra special incentive, there will be pizza provided. <laughs> And um, so anybody who's coming, we invite you to bring um, salad or fruit or something to share with other people. So the program is going to be focused and centered around the 10 paramitas. And so on the 11th, the topic of discussion and teaching will be generosity. So um, if you're interested in coming to the meeting and to finding out what this program is about um, and training in being a helper and a caring person and possibly even taking a look at chaplaincy um, as time goes on, please come on November 11th and maybe do a little bit of homework, um, do some Googling of the Paramita of Generosity and um, see how generosity manifests in your own personal life. You know, the, the important thing is, is how do we practice generosity? How do we receive generosity? What is it like in community? What is it like personally? What is it like um, in Sangha life? What's it like, you know, just um, what is generosity? So, and how do you feel it? How do you express it? So that's November 11th, noon to two. And you got anything else you want to add, Lama? Um, that's, yeah, so, um, Delek's kind of, uh, when you say Tashi uh, Delek, you know, well-being, auspicious well-being. So, um, there's some prefer, you know, it's becoming like professional bodhisattva. It's on, it's thinking along those lines. So, um, it's helping, but with, with certain skills and and within certain, um, you know, path. So it's it's a big deal, and um, some people may want to go on and uh, do chaplaincy training. Um, the two-year uh, foundations courses is a foundation, a prerequisite. Um, so uh, we'll be talking about that at the Delic meeting too. But um, basically this is a uh, Bodhisattva Sangha. That's the big piece of what we're doing. Um, so uh, even if we're Tantric Mahasiddhas, we're still Bodhisattva Tantric Mahasiddhas, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, can I just remind people that we are still trying to fundraise um, for the money that we sent uh, for His Holiness Dalai Lama's Long Life Prayers and to help Geshe out with travel. So, yes, thank you. Um, if you have questions about that, you can talk to Lama, Patty, me. So, but it'd be great if we could actually raise more than that, so we'd have a little bit left in the coffers to do something else or for the next set of prayers. Or, uh, get Geshe first class to get home. <laughs> Yes. So um, I just want to say a little bit about fundraising. As many of the big donors and sponsors here now, the um, you know the gift of energy and the gift of finances to um, uh, creates incredible positive potential. Um, uh, you know, sometimes called merit, but I, I like punya. I like positive potential maybe, or positive habits, positive outcomes. Um, generally in the West, we have to be kind of convinced of this, you know? Um, so we think, uh, well, we'll give, but then we want to see, you know, it's generally transactional, we want to see it done right, you know? <laughs> so I gave this statue, I want this statue to be bought, that kind of thing. But uh, traditionally, the dana paramita, the generosity paramita is like, we're, we're not so worried about the outcome as we're, we're immediately getting the, the positive karmic piece. So um, uh, it, it does work that way. So um, 
when my grandparents died, I inherited a lot of money and um, I gave it all to Dharma over the years. And the rest of my family, of course, I'm an idiot. Um, but uh, it's all come back, you know? But the nice part about it is I don't have to own it. So that's not the stress, right? So with stress, when you think, oh, God, my money, my money, you know? So when we get the instant karma, like John Lennon said, when we give a gift and we get, and it's toward Dharma, then um, uh, we, the merit is incalculable because it's not based on a transaction of ownership. It's really interesting. This stuff actually really works. So this is quite literal. It isn't kind of just psychological mumbo jumbo. It's actually quite quite literal. Yeah. Okay. Mancha, mancha. Oh, oh, go. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I just wanted, in the spirit of generosity, remind you we're having a book giveaway here. So if anybody has any Dharma books that they would like to have a new home, there's a uh, table in the library. You notice it's been empty because as soon as the book hits the table, it's gone, which is wonderful. So um, please um, bring anything you have up until November 7th and leave it on the table. And if you'd like to take a book, please do so. And I also just would like to um, announce that this Wednesday at the meditation at 6, I'll be doing a meditation on sound using um, bowls and things. So if someone would like to you know, participate in how sound can be used in meditation, this would be the time to do it. So thank you. Oh, there's a hand. Thank you, Sue. So, yeah, so in the back. <sighs> <clears throat> Hello. Okay. I just wanted to uh, mention that next Sunday after service is going to be the uh, the restarting of the Dharma men's group. Um, so check the roar for more details, but um, there will be some food and fellowship. So stop by. No commitment. Just come join us. Food will bring them in. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Omaha. See you later or sooner. Om Araya Pazaya Nayandi Om Araya Pazaya Nayandi Om Araya Pazaya Nayandi